If you're a guest here today, thank you for coming. Uh, you've made our day. If you're a bridge member, you've been here before, uh, thank you for coming too. Uh, we don't want to um, take for granted uh, the folks that are coming. What a beautiful weekend. I mean, like the weather, 60s and 70s, that's, that's my kind of weather right there. I love that kind of stuff. <clears throat> I know some of the people that have allergies don't care for it that much, but man, that's just a beautiful temp for me. Um, Pastor Dustin spoke to us last week on living life together. How many remember that? I can't see out there. For some reason, the lights are a little bit brighter here today, but um, that's okay. Um, but as a church, uh, we're living life together. And he talked about how the very first church in the book of Acts um, came together. They they, they, they were united. They, they were uh, continually devoting themselves, he said, to a relationship with God. And he said they were continually devoting themselves to a relationship with fellowship and, and, with, and, and other relationships, just building relationships and devoted to that and um, continued uh, uh, developing or devoted to fellowship. Um, they were continually together, the Bible says, they had a common vision uh, and gave everything that they had to that vision and to that thing. Together, that's what they did. They had each other's backs. Like for real, they had their backs, you know. Uh, not, just, not just saying something, but they really did. They served and worshipped God together. And what the Bible says, and he pointed it out, was every day they did this. Every day. He said that they relied on each other, they, they needed each other, they took care of one another, they really cared. And the reason why they could take care of each other was because they knew what was going on in their lives because they were together all the time. So they were able to help. A lot of people, they don't know what's going on in the other people's lives, but they would help if they knew it, right? But they were together all the time. They hung out together, fellowship together, played you know, games and enjoyed life and dinner and all that kind of stuff. He said they broke bread, not just... Once in a while, but day by day, that's what he said. And he says, with this kind of living, Dustin said, with this kind of living life together, there is healing. He said, there's, there's selflessness that comes out of this. How many of you want to be a, a little bit more selfless? Amen? It's okay to say amen. I'm going I'm to get you guys involved today. No, I'm serious. I, uh, today is going to be a day of, of involvement. Uh, and you'll know what I'm going to talk about, but I'm going to be asking for, for you to get involved a little bit. Now, don't get freaked out, okay? I'm not going to call on you or anything like that, but, but, but yeah, you got to have to get involved here today, all right? And if you don't, we'll have, we got some people looking out. To, no, I'm teasing. Uh, but he said that, that this kind of living life together is also, uh, there's joyfulness in it as well. If you want to be a part of the church, it's, it's happening in these life groups that they were talking about announcing today, an opportunity to live life together. And if you missed the opportunity, you can plug in right after the service and, and, and jump online, get on the app, get on the website, and, and get plugged in. Uh, that's the heartbeat of the bridge right there, life groups. Okay, I'd like to piggyback off of uh, Pastor Dustin's message last uh, week, and I want to get, <clears throat> I want to get a movement started. I want to get a movement started um, here at the bridge and in our community. A movement where, where the movement where first, first we come together, like, like they did in the church in Acts, like we just talked about, where they come together. And, and, and secondly, that we unite as they did in that first church. But in order to succeed, in order to, to go with this movement, in order to succeed with this movement, we need to respond. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about first responders. First responders. That's been the talk in a lot of the news today, a lot of you know, the headlines of what's going on, first responders lately with the COVID situation. And then not too long ago with 9-11 and all, you know, we still remember the first responders and all that. And just always all the first responders with, with all of this that's going on. And every day they, they take chances in their life. We can't give enough thanks and appreciation uh, uh, for those who press through the fear and press through and, 
and, and, and all the consequences and everything that could possibly happen that come from being a first responder. First responders, guys, I think we should admire them. I, I think we do admire them. First responders are appreciated. First responders are, are brave. First responders are awesome. Let's give it up for the first responders here today. Being the first res to, to respond to anything... And I don't care what it is. Being the, it can be a little scary sometimes. You ask a question in the class, and the, you know the first response. Oh, I'm not saying no. I'll let somebody else go first. There's always that. There can be fear with being a first responder. There can be. There can be. Uh, uh, it takes courage to be a first responder. It takes. It, it can be embarrassing sometimes to be a first responder. Uh, but it can take a purpose worth being embarrassed over be a first responder. It can be extremely rewarding. There was a song, First Responders. It's something that we need to, I really want to focus in today on. There was a song in the, in the 90s in the gospel circuit that was called Make Us One. It was written by a guy who, his name is Phil Driscoll, and he, he could play the trumpet, man, really, really good. Um, and the lyric of this song, I'm going to have him put it up here on the screen. It says, bind us together with your bond of unity. Listen to the words, because your word says that we're brothers. Let us be one, Lord, even as you and the Father are one, so the world can see you inside us. And then it goes to the chorus, make us one. Make us one heart. Make us one mind. Make us one. Let your will be done. And make us one flame to proclaim your name. Make us one. Make us one. And then it goes on to the second verse. Let us be united. See each other through your eyes. May we forgive our brother. We see you risen no longer on the rugged cross. Lord, may your glory fill us. And it goes back to the course. Make us one heart. Make us one mind. Make us one. Let your will be done. Make us one flame to proclaim your name. Make us one. Make us one. I believe that scripture comes from... Uh, John chapter 17, um, and what's interesting about this prayer is, is that it's the last uh, prayer that Jesus prayed before he was hauled away to be crucified. He said, make them one. And he didn't do it just once. He did it five times in that one chapter. That's how important it was. He was saying, God, you know, I'm getting ready to be out of here, and, 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 and I pray, God, that you would make them one. Make them one. My hope today, you that are here today and those of you that are watching um, online, would be our bridge, would be first responders to Bridge Church. First responders for what? First responders for, for coming together, for, for uniting, for being together, doing things together, living life together. The things that we talked about on Friday night that you guys were doing to, to not sit back, but be a first responder for, for coming together in unity. Jesus prayed that, that we would come together, that we would unify. Yet unity. Unity is such a big deal, guys. The devil, you know, the devil can divide us. If the devil can divide us, he can, he can conquer us. Unity is important. In Psalm, let's get started. In Psalm 133, verse 1, it says, Behold, or look, look how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Look how pleasant it is for that to happen. And he goes on in verse 3, and he kind of tells them how, uh, as an example of how, look, look, it's like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. But here's what I want to call attention to. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. When we come together as brethren in unity, God commands a blessing. God said, I'll, I'll command blessing on you if you'll just come together and unite together and, and dwell together in unity. It, it, it all makes sense, doesn't it, now when, when we're talking about the enemy that wants to divide our families, he wants, to, he wants to divide our homes. No wonder he wants us bickering and fighting and fussing all the time and why he wants us to be so busy that we can't get together at the kitchen table or the dinner table and, and talk as a family as we eat dinner. And he wants to divide us because there's a command, blessing, a commanded blessing that comes upon your home, that comes upon your family, that comes upon your church when the people dwell together in unity. 
Joshua, I used this a couple weeks ago, this verse 24, 15 says, but as for me and my house, we, not I, 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 but we, we will serve the Lord. We are going to come together. We are going to, to unite. Make us one family united. Make us one voice united. Make us one heart, Lord. The thing is that when it stops being all about me, 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 and it becomes about us, then there's a commanded blessing that's on the way. I hope that's sinking in right there. And if not, I'm pressing forward because this is what it's going to be about today. The commanded blessing is on the way when we unite. When, when your marriage is not just about me, 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 and it becomes about us, well, then marriage becomes a blessing. Same, same thing with the bridge. When our church has unity and it's all about me, 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 but instead it's about us, when we care for other people, God says, you know what, I'm going to bless that. <clears throat> he, he will transfer blessing when we go from the me, 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 me to, you know what, make us one, Lord. Make us one. We're so self-centered sometimes. We're, we're so constantly thinking about ourselves. But today I pray, make us one. Make us one. In, no, in Numbers chapter 11, verse 17, it says, Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them from you to them and they shall bear the burden of the people with you that you may not bear it yourself alone see god is telling moses here in this in this scripture he says hey it's not all about you it's not a one man show here i'm going to take the spirit that's on you and i'm going to put it on the 70 elders and, and because it's not about you it's about us uh, I, I don't want the bridge to be built on, uh, you know, it's all about me or a one-man show, but make us one, Lord. We're here together. I need you and you need me. And together, we're a force that hell can't stop, that hell can't, can't defeat. It's, it's not about me. It's not about me. Make us one force, one force that defeats the enemy. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, it says, After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, you notice that? Our Father, which art in heaven. I was watching a, what do they call it, TikTok? I was, I was watching the TikTok and this, had this guy, um, they were asking him, what's, and they knew that he was going to say it wrong. So he said, what, what's God's name? And he said, Harold. And they were just laughing at him like, oh, you say, you know, our Father, which art in heaven, Harold be thy name. And he was serious, and they were laughing up the storm at him. Um, but anyway, Jesus said, pray this way, our Father. It, it's about us. When, when you begin to pray for others, when you begin to pray for your spouse, or when you begin to pray for your brother or sister here at the bridge, or, or for your children, or for a friend, watch this. God says, pray one for another that you may be healed. That's a little different, isn't it? Pray one for another that you may be healed. It's a powerful, it's so powerful when we pray, our Father, make us one, Lord. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John, definitely first responders, uh, went up to the temple together, and that's the key, together at the hour of prayer, and on the way performed a miracle for the layman who was begging there at the gate. But what they went together is what I'm trying to say, to pray. Many of you know the story about the crippled man who couldn't get to Jesus, and they had to lower him from the ceiling down to Jesus to be healed. But it, it took uh, some first responders, it, it, it took who, who had to see the need, who had to jump in and come together and figure out a way to carry this man up onto the roof and then tear away the shingles and then lower him down to Jesus. You know what? I pray uh, uh, that the bridge will be just like those people, just like them. Nobody looking around to see who else is going to move first, you know. But, hey, listen, I see him. Let's go get these guys and let's go help him out. Make us one, Lord. Make us one, one, one church, one community. Help us to help people in this community, Lord. I believe that God's looking for a unified response. Listen to me. I talked about a movement. But I believe that God is looking for a unified response to this movement that I'm talking about here today. To the moving of the Spirit of God. 
as a first responder, putting yourself aside and risking and sacrificing for others is a part of the job description of a first responder. Bridge, you know what? It's got to be more than me, 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 me. It, it, it must become us. It must become us. You come to the church sometimes and, and we walk in and if you're not careful, it's all about my this and my that and my situation and my feelings. And I'm not going to praise the Lord because I just don't feel like it today. But we, or I'm not going to come because I just don't feel like it today. But we ought to be a, a, a first responder and, and praise the Lord because we understand that we're creating an atmosphere not for me, 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 but for us. We're creating an atmosphere for us. Maybe you don't need a blessing, but there's maybe somebody here next to you that had the worst week of their life. <clears throat> and if you can get your mind off of you just for a moment, you can help create an atmosphere for us. And that's what Jesus prayed is, make them one, Lord. Make them one. Make us one. The Bible says, weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. You're not supposed to rejoice all by yourself. That's a little funny. If anybody on your row starts clapping and starts rejoicing, be a first responder and clap with them. You know what? That, that's what the Bible says. Rejoice with those who rejoice. If my brother gets a blessing, well, I'm excited over the blessing that he's got. Because I'm going to need one someday myself. Let's just all just you know, magnify the Lord together. It's not about the me, 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 me. It's about us. It's about us. If you love Jesus... Don't wait for your neighbor. Get past the me, me, me thing and, you know, the fear and all that stuff and come together in unity and give the Lord some praise. You know what? Make us one. Make us one, Lord. Wherever, wherever God's moving, I, I know we're a young church, but this is why I'm speaking about this today. I think it's real important that we respond to his movement, to God's movement, his moving, the spirit of God moving. Yes, your, your, your engagement matters. It, 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 it matters. Your response matters. <laughs> the most important part of a service is not the singing, although that was wonderful up there today. That's not the most important part. It's your response to the singing. The most important is, the part is not about the sermon itself. It's your response to the word of God. Let, let, let's forget about ourselves. Dear God, let, let a, you let a church like the bridge come together in unity and, and be a church of responders and forget about the me, me, me thing and it's all about us. This city won't be able, it won't know what hit them. Everybody say amen. You guys out there? Amen. That's all right. Say it. Thank you, Lord. As many of you know, Jesus' death, his burial, his resurrection it marked the end of the dispensation of judgment. That's what marked it. That marked the end of it right there. But it also marked the beginning of what? Grace. It marked the beginning of the grace dispensation. So as Pastor Dustin talked about last week, the book of Acts is not only the beginning of the church, but it's the beginning of the dispensation of grace. And, and as we were talking about the first church coming together and living life together, we only get six chapters into the book of Acts, which is the beginning of the, of the, of the uh, uh, church. Six chapters in of the start of the church, and Ananias and Sapphira, husband and wife, are struck dead. So much for grace. <laughs> you know why they were struck dead? Some of you who know the story say, well, they didn't give the money. <laughs> That's not why. Nobody got up and was, 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 you know, hey, bring your offerings. Nobody was saying take up an offering. Listen to me. There was a, listen, listen very close. There was a movement of God. There was, it was the first movement of God of the church. There was a movement that was happening. God was moving and the people and the spirit of God was moving and came together in unity and started bringing things and they started selling everything they had and they're giving all their money so that they can help the gospel of Christ move forward and help the people and they were just coming all together and there was a movement and the Bible said that Ananias and Sapphira didn't flow with the movement. They didn't go with what God was trying to do. 
And even though it was just weeks into the dispensation of grace, God said, you know what? I'm going to interrupt this grace thing for a second here. And, and, and I'm going to go back into judgment. I'm going to kill me a couple, two, me, two members of the, of, the, of the new church who refuse to get involved, to participate in what I'm doing in the church. When God's moving, do you think it's important to participate? Many of you have heard of the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule. This rule just simply means 20% participate, 80% spectate. And this is common, really, guys, with anything that we do. It's common in our job. It's common you know, uh, in, in a club that you're in. It's common on a team that you play on. It's a common uh, thing in, um, you know, like I just noticed, uh, Anthony, people are making up for all his mistakes out there. Uh, on the on the thing, <laughs> oh boy! But he's short, but man, he's good. Uh, he is good. Uh, but anyway, it was Walter that was part of that that eighty <laughs> percent. But anyway, here's what it is: it's twenty percent. Work hard. I mean, they, they, they sweat, blood, sweat, tears. 20% work hard. 80% ride off the coattails of those people that are working hard. That's what the Pareto principle is. Principle is. But, but we want to flip that script here at the bridge. We want 80%. Listen to me. Listen very close. We want 80% out there uh, attending Sunday services every Sunday. We want them, uh, 80% of them participating, learning about God and, and joining life groups and, and, and growing together in Christ and serving and worshiping and praising God together and giving in their finances together. And then the remaining 20%, they're going, hey, what? they're all new folks. They're just new people and they're going, Oh, man, what's going on here? What's, what am I doing wrong? i got to jump in on this thing. That's what we want. We talk about culture. That's what we want. <clears throat> it was during the Last Supper in Matthew chapter 26, verse 22. It says, and they were exceedingly sorrowful, and, and each of them began to say to him, to the Lord, Lord, is it I? Is it I? Jesus said to the disciples now, we're talking about the disciples, the ones that have followed him all this time, one of you guys have betrayed me. And listen to what I'm trying to say here. All of them, it wasn't just one, but all of them, looked at, look at that, all of them responded and said, is it I, Lord? Is it I? So many come to church and they hear the word of God and think, you know what? Uh, that, that's good for so and so. I, I, I wish they were here today. I wish I wish they were here. But notice the proper response is, "Lord, is it I?" If the, the disciples got to do that, I would think we all have to do it. Lord, is it I? Some of you come to church and act like everybody else needs to really do something except you. But maybe you ought to leave here with the response of, "Lord, is it I?" Turn to your neighbor next to you and say, "Is it I?" Did anybody say yeah? I mean, I'm just asking. <laughs> In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were, and I want you to pay attention to this, all. Everybody say all. all. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord. They were in one mind, in one place. They all came together, 120 of them, no one missing, showed up. They all responded they all responded. Not just the disciples, you know, not just the volunteers, you know. They all responded. It was all 120 of them. And then we go to Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Just a couple of verses later, I want you to read it with me. And they were what? All. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. There is something about all of us. All of us together, being in one accord, being united together in one place. That's when God, listen to me, that's when God commanded the blessing to come down on them. Because they all came together in unity. And all 120 of them responded to the move of God. And when they threw away the me, me, me thing and, and said it became about us, the reason God can't bless you guys 
like he really wants to is because you're not thinking like a first responder. You think, you know, it's, it's me, 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 me. And one of the most important prayers that we can ever pray, just like Jesus pray, uh, prayed five times, is make them one. Them, them. Come together. Unity. After they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, they came out of the upper room <laughs> and they were full of the Spirit of God and they started kind of like spilling out into the streets. And the people on the, in the streets were saying, oh my God, these people are crazy drunk people. <laughs> it's okay to get a little emotional. I think when God saves you, I think it's okay to get a little emotional. Amen? Give me an amen on that. Let's get, let's, let's, you know, when God gets and touches somebody, that's the best thing in the world. That's the best thing in the world. In Acts chapter 2, verse 14, check this out. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And heed my words. And he began to preach to them, you know, um, about you know what was going to happen. And these people aren't drunk as you suppose. And he begins to speak to them. But I want you to notice something here. Peter standing. The word here says Peter standing up with the eleven. With the eleven. We always talk about Peter. But standing with the eleven. These people. They weren't just sitting down by the wayside. They, they were together. They, 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 but when he was preaching. He, he, he was he was with some first responders. You see, all 11 of them, they weren't sitting down. They were standing up. They were standing together with him. They were in unity together. And when Peter was uh, uh, taking it to the streets, into the streets of Jerusalem, they understood, hey, you know what? It's not about me. Jesus prayed, make them one. And, and, and if we don't stand up, guys, listen to me. It wasn't seven. It wasn't eight. It was all 11 of them that were there with him, that stood with him. They stood by him. They were right there, and it brought the power of God from the upper room and spilled it out into the streets. That's what unity will do. And then you know what? It spilled it out into the streets, and you know where we find it? Right here at the bridge because of that. Right here at the bridge and in this community. And we got to take it together, get together, bind together, and take it to this community. I want to read Acts chapter 19, verse 34. But before I do, leading up to this verse, it talks about a guy. And, and, and this is where I was telling you, I'm going to need you to respond a little bit today. Everybody's going to get out, have to get out of their comfort zone just a little bit, okay? I promise it's not going to hurt. But before I do, leading up to this verse, it talks about this guy by the name of Demetrius. And Demetrius was an idol maker. He, he made idols for a living. That's what he did for a living. And he was making a lot of them and making a lot of money until, and selling them all, of course, and until Paul came into town and he started preaching about Jesus and against idols. And then all of a sudden, he was basically ruining Demetrius' business. And, and so Demetrius, while, while being in this great theater where he knew they all came together to worship idols, uh, uh, he starts riling things up, getting it all stirred up. Uh, the others whose pocketbooks were impacted because now all of a sudden idols are not going to be, you know, they're being impacted here. They're not, he's preaching against them. And it says that the people of the city were, were angry and had gathered together in this big theater. And here's what I want to read to you in verse 34. It says, but when they found out that he was a Jew, here, let's, what, what, what's the next word? All. All with one voice cried out for about Two hours, two hours, great as Diana of the Ephesians, for two hours, all of them in one voice. That's, these, these are all idol worshipers. They all, listen to me, they all came together and all with one voice cried out for about two hours, great as Diana, great as Diana. All of them, every one of them was doing it, just, just, not just the leaders. Not, not, I'm not talking about just the leaders. I'm not just talking about the volunteers. or the, I'm not just talking about the amen corner. I'm not talking about these guys on the front row. All of them were doing it. Every single one of them. All the people with one voice cried out 
listen to me, to a false God, to a false God. Hmm. For two hours. I want you to imagine for, like, we've been to concerts before. You've been to things like this, but for two hours, crying out, two hours, two hours, bridge, I'm not looking at two hours today. You know the first thing I want? The first thing I want, I just want us all, all of us, all of us, everybody say all, all of us to gather together, to come together. Ever since I, we've opened the doors to the bridge, ever since we started the bridge here, I, I've always wanted to see what it would be like for everyone who calls the bridge their church to come together in one place, in one service, in one building, I mean, and, and worship at one time. Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, I know we'd have to get more seats out. We'd have to figure out a way for a, one of those, you know, what do you call it, rooms in the back where they can watch. Vid- There's no way this place could hold it. Guys, I, I got to tell you something. I've always wanted to see that, us coming together. Now, look, they all came together. Everybody say all. They all came together and for two hours screaming and hollering at the top of their lungs and all for a false god, all for a stone image, all for a piece of material that had no intelligence whatsoever. And we don't seem to have a cause for all of us to even just come together in one place all at one time. For, for, for the only one true God. Oh, geez, gosh, it's Sunday again. Uh, we got to go to church today, guys. Don't, don't think I don't know some of the conversations that might happen, you know, as you're lifting up the covers. Oh, God, it's Sunday. <laughs> oh, man, I forgot. We got we to gotta serve today. That means we got to get up early, too. <laughs> hmm. And some of you begrudgingly come to worship the living God, the living God who suffered and died and rose again for all of us, for all of us so that we could be saved. I'm not asking for two hours here today. I promise you that. But wouldn't it be cool? Here we go. Wouldn't it be cool if all, everybody say all. If all of us, every single one of us today, here today, I don't care if you're at home, you can do this at home, would push aside that it's all about me, it's all about me, me, me thing, and decide that you're going to be a first responder today, and, and, and just for two minutes, just two minutes, worship team, just two minutes, stand up on your feet and begin to worship God Just two minutes, every one of you with everything that you've got. Great is Jesus Christ. He's the Savior of my heart. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. And I praise him today. I praise him today. I thank him today. Be a first responder. Yes, be a first responder and worship him today. Get up on your feet and talk to him and tell him and praise him. He's worth it today. He's worth it. Respond. Hallelujah, Jesus. I need a commanded, I need a commanded blessing from your life today, for your life today. Do you need a commanded blessing for your family? Do you need a commanded blessing for your children, for your, for your marriage? Make us one, Lord. Make us one. In Genesis chapter 11, verse 16, or 6, I mean, it says, And the Lord said, Behold, uh, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now... Nothing will be restrained for them, which they have imagined to do. Now listen, God said, listen, they've all come together to build this Tower of Babel. Wasn't a good thing. They've got one vision. That They're all saying the same thing, one language. They're all saying, we can do this thing. We can do it. 
And if it works, guys, if it works for something evil like there's nothing that you could imagine to do that the people of God can't do, if they'll just unite and come together, God said, I've got to stop this thing because, uh, because they knew that if, he kept, if they kept talking the same thing, the same language, coming together and uniting, that nothing would be restrained from them. That's the word of God. Now look, think of that with your family and your life, with this church. Do you have division in any of those areas? How many people are you not talking to? Is there something going on with division? How many people are angry? You're angry with them. Something going on. And all the devil wants is for you to just stay that way. Because then you don't get that commanded blessing. Because you're not coming together in unity and dwelling together in unity. Matthew 12, it says, if a house is divided against itself, it will not stand. In Matthew 18, verse 20, it says, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You see, it's not all about just me, 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 me. It's about us, and not just us. I'm not just talking about us gathering, because you can gather and not be together. You know what I mean? I'm talking about getting together where you're united. Where, 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 where you're all one heart, you're all one mind. And that's when the real power enters into your midst. God enters the equation. It says, there am I in the midst of them where there's two or three are gathered. So many times we come to church, we act like it's up to the singers to move us and to get us going and they do their best. They did awesome today and for the preacher to move us and, 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 and we do our best. But really, it's not, it, it, it's, not, it, it, it's, up, it's not about that. It's up to us, together, all of us. When we come together in unity to lift up our Savior, Jesus Christ, when, when there's unity in a church like the bridge, guys, it's, it's, it's unstoppable. 